Episode 100 The Goddess Yells Boss, I... Louis finally couldn't hold it in anymore, and wanted to ask. Ginny patted Louis on the shoulder. She was ecstatic. It turned out that she wasn't crazy after all. Tracy Wright, come, let me see if I've got this right. Ginny pursed her lips. Her face looked sly, like she was a little fox. Peter put his arms behind his back and listened to her story. First of all, you drugged my milk. After I fell asleep, you broke into my room through the air duct and collected my fingerprints so that whoever you're working for can frame me. It was just that your accomplice did not expect to find me awake. That's why he tried to hurt me, to cover up his tracks. Right at that moment, Peter arrived, so your accomplice ran away and hid in the small storage room he found earlier. When everyone was tired and the cleaning staff was at work this morning, he took advantage of the chaos and left the place. Because you work at the Dawson Manor, you know the blind spots in the surveillance system. That's how you and your accomplice were able to avoid detection. Upon hearing Ginny's explanation, things started to make sense for everyone else in the room. Ginny recalled how she was afraid that she was losing her mind. It made her shudder, but she quickly regained her composure. She fixed her gaze on Tracy. Speak! What were you looking for? Tracy stood still. She didn't respond. Peter broke the silence. Ginny's smart, but she's got one thing wrong. I believe our culprit was actually caught by the surveillance cameras. Peter signaled Lewis with his eyes. Lewis immediately understood what his boss wanted and nodded. His fingers tapped on the keyboard a few times. He sped up the video until he found what he was looking for. The culprit was indeed caught on camera, but he was in disguise. Lewis prided himself on being an expert. To fall for such a low-level, unsophisticated trick, Lewis didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Tracy, the matter is clear. Do you still have anything to say in your defense? Lewis immediately started interrogating their prime suspect. After listening to Ginny's analysis, Peter noted that Tracy had turned pale. The look of guilt was clear on her face. Sometimes, people do things they have to. Because they have no other choice. I know that I, Tracy Lowry, have let down the Dawson family. I cannot say more than that. After saying that, Tracy stood up and was about to ram her head into a pillar. Ginny's pupils dilated, and she charged toward Tracy to block her from harming herself. Tracy was determined to hurt herself, so she put a lot of force into it. Ginny felt pain in her spine, when Tracy slammed into her. At that point, the accused maid fell to the floor dazed, and then looked up at Ginny, wondering why she wanted to protect her. Please, stop doing that! Ginny yelled so hard that her face turned red. Do you think hurting yourself is going to make things better? No, you have to live with what you've done. There's no easy way out. This was the first time Peter had heard Ginny talk like that. He didn't think she had it in her. He stepped forward to support her. Peter suddenly felt that he still had a lot to learn about Ginny. Ginny was starting to cool down. Only after being supported by Peter did she realize that she had yelled in front of him. Would Peter keep seeing her as a goddess after seeing her get so angry? Peter found it quite amusing. One moment, his woman was hissing like a quarrelsome cat. Next, she was as meek and awkward as a kitten. Lewis, Peter said coldly while gesturing toward Tracy. Make her talk. Lewis nodded. 
he would take care of it. Peter then carried Ginny up the stairs. He wanted some alone time with Ginny, especially after today's events. Meanwhile, downstairs, all the housekeepers were taken by the police for interrogation. The Dawson Manor instantly became quiet again. Quiet, as if nothing had ever happened. Peter gently placed Ginny on the bed and helped her take off her shirt. Her smooth and fair skin had already turned blue where Tracy had slammed into her. Ginny was lying on the bed. She knew that Peter was staring at her back, so she was a little self-conscious about it. Um... Don't move. I'll get you some medicine. Her back hurt a lot. Applying medicine to it was a good idea. Peter took out a tube of topical cream for back pain from a nearby drawer. He applied the white cream to the bruise on her back. Then gently, dexterously, he started rubbing it on her skin. It felt good. She wasn't quite sure if it was the cream or Peter's touch. Why did you do it? With her back to Peter, Ginny couldn't see him. She could only hear the concern in his voice. She turned her head and said, I don't want to see anyone get hurt. It was a kind of instinct. Thus, she had really thought of nothing when she pounced on the housekeeper to prevent her from harming herself. Peter raised his eyebrow and stopped talking. He focused on applying the medicine to Ginny's back. However, his hand slowly started moving to other parts of her body. Hey, hey, hey! What are you doing? Are you playing around in the middle of the day? Uh... Ginny asked and kissed him.